All right, now let's make some damn. You can really taste the people. You do know that Riverdale was founded in the Maple Syrup industry. Here in Riverdale? Dilton Doily plays with guns. Big one, Betty. Sardonic humor is just my way of relating to the world. Everyone knows how much I loved my brother. Exactly. If we go in there with the entire Scooby gang, forget it. We're compromised. War is hell, Jack. No, Archie. Hell is other people. Out of the four of us, only you and Archie haven't kissed. Fascinating. I'm gonna go get a Betty. Do you want anything? A glass of milk would be great. Alice? Is it true what they say about men who just been released from prison at me? The Coopers are one of the most respected families in Riverdale. Take your male gaze and your male privilege and get out of the women's locker room. Happy birthday, dear Chuckhead. Last night was... A PG-13 grope session. Color me shocked. Archie Andrews, is that why you became a mediocre musician overnight? I'm not interested in being anybody's rebound. Besides, I'm more into girls anyways. And all this time, I thought you were a lover, not a fighter. I'm both. I've got layers. And it'll be a cold day in hell before a snake lets a pig tell him what to do. Welcome back, everyone, to your number one source for Riverdale love, mockery, <laughs> and everything in between. My name is Jordan Lowe. I'm Cliff Barnes. I'm Seth. And between the time we recorded our previous Riverdale episode and the time it was released, uh, we had mentioned Luke Perry had a stroke soon after he passed away. So uh, he had already left us by the time you heard that last episode. So I uh, was trying to figure out our timelines here. We're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're playing a little bit of catch up tonight, but... Um, I did see where the cast and crew announced they are dedicating the rest of the remainder of the episodes to Luke Perry this season. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen after after that. And it said they suspended production for yeah. at least a day or two that they mm-hmm. you know, just sent everybody home to just yeah. deal with it. Right. So, obviously a big, huge loss in our world. Um, Riverdale is our favorite thing to <laughs> to talk about you, i don't remember if we've talked did, did you guys watch 90210 growing up were you i was dating a girl at the time that of course every girl was at the hoping time, you were luke Perry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah every girl at the time was watching but 90210 so she sucked me into it and we watched a lot of it yeah i remember being in junior high and it's it's kind of funny thinking back on it but we watched that show me and a few of my friends for almost exact same reasons we're watching Riverdale now. <laughs> like I remember there was uh there was an I I was in seventh or eighth grade and there was some episode of some sort and all I remember for weeks we talked about this was Dil you know, Luke Perry as Dylan and he had this like old timey sports car. Very yeah, yeah, James yeah, yeah. Dean that was like a yeah. It was a Porsche so or I was something. Say, it looked like a Porsche to me. Whatever it was. And He's jumping his Porsche like over a ravine or something. And I remember we all noticed as he's airborne, you hear him hit the gas on the engine, you know, just <laughs> like it's going to make it go faster or whatever. I, I guarantee we, I would do the same thing. We we talked about that forever and how dumb it was. But yeah, I, I def, I, I'll admit I watched the show. Um, you know, 10 years, whatever it was on, I probably watched most of them. Yeah, I, I'd never seen an episode, but I, wow. I saw when this news broke, people were talking about him, and someone in the comment section left the video of when Dylan's dad was killed on the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember that. In reference to you know, the ridiculous yeah. of Riverdale. Yeah, crazy. Where he was, somebody put a bomb in the car, yeah. and he was <laughs> supposed to go start it, but he got a phone call and got yeah. interrupted. And it was like the car blows up and he yeah. falls to his knees. Yeah, I remember that. Just drama city. It, it, Really was like Riverdale 1.0. <laughs> I think he was 902. Like, I think he was dating like uh, Rebecca Gayhart or something at the time yeah. on the show. Or no, I've it, never seen it. It had some crazy <laughs> moments. It had some crazy moments. Yeah. Hey, um, everybody likes watching pretty people shows. 
Yeah. Okay, so... And I believe at the day we record this, Cole Sprouse's new movie hits theaters. Yeah, five feet five feet apart. Five which feet is apart. what I say when I go in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Colon, no popcorn. <laughs> this is kind of the weepy teen movie about two uh, uh, critical patients mm-hmm. who can't be within five feet of each other. And it's right in his Jughead wheelhouse. Yeah. Kind of the sad bad boy but still approachable in the door at what point do you think he whips out a switchblade on her yeah that's four or and a half feet a, long on a nurse or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right not, so not where are we me. at what uh, uh, what yeah, chapter chapter 49 fire walk with me that's a twin peaks or something mm-hmm. twin peaks that was the twin peaks movie, movie. Mm-hmm. that uh, i think wrapped everything up Cool. Yeah, <laughs> we open up on a mid-century colonial. Mid-century colonial. On, on a quiet, on elm-lined, elm-lined street. street. Three bedrooms, four baths. Perfect, Perfect for, for families. families. Plenty of storage and generous closet space. Welcome. I'm Alice Smith. You'll be happy here. You will What's be happy happens? here. Elm Street. Cooper's she is house selling is the up Cooper us. house. Many fort were built. It's the last thing that was holding her back. <laughs> we're headed to the farm. <laughs> yeah. First off, I'd like to say that this is a wonderful place to raise a family. Many a fort were built by my two girls in this very room. Her kids built a fort. This was great, by the way. Betty comes downstairs. And bonus, it's also where my serial killer father showed us creepy snuff films. <laughs> Elizabeth, shouldn't you be at school? We have wonderful schools in this district. Oh, I see that you're eyeing the fireplace, which is original to the house. Mm, yes, and it comes with fun accessories like the shovel my mother used to knock out my father, the notorious serial killer, the Black Hood. <laughs> it's true, you can Google it. But make sure you look up Alice Cooper and not Alice Smith. It's all there. Or try Murder House on Elm Street. That's his house. <laughs> She's like that. She's like, oh, I can't. My girl spelled forts down here. She's like, yeah, it's also where my serial killer father <laughs> showed us creepy snuff films. <laughs> Again, reinforcing my view that Betty is from a different show. Yeah. Yes. Who yeah. understands? She can peel. She's like Deadpool. She can break the fourth wall. She yeah. sees I what's like going that. on. I like that theory. Let's follow that thread throughout. <laughs> Alice is like, oh, I see your eye in the fireplace, but it, it you know. But he's like, yeah, it comes with uh, the shovel my mother used to knock out my father. <laughs> she wanged him with like, the shovel. Uh, <laughs> this is like stepbrothers when they're yeah. trying not to get them to sell yeah. the house. <laughs> he's the notorious serial killer of the Black Hood. Remember him? It's true. You can Google it. She's not uh, wrong. Yeah. She says, don't look up Alice Cooper. Look up Alice Smith. It's she all says, there. Don't look up. She says, don't look up Alice Smith. Oh, Look okay. up Alice Cooper. No. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. And she says, uh, or just try Murder House on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's this house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then we get over to the boxing ring, and uh, Moe's got a problem. <laughs> There's a guy named Moe. Well, uh, uh, Archie's not paying his dues. Yeah, you know, he's just in here boxing for free, which you know takes another episode before that's resolved. How he's mm-hmm. gonna not a problem there, but um, he wants him to just you know help sweep the place up. Maybe I'll let you keep boxing. Then we're at uh, we got a little problem because they've they've triple booked the classroom where people like to have their meetings. <laughs> you get to swords and serpents. Uh, we got the farmies are coming in, and then the pretty poisons or something are having a problem. It's uh, it's oh, it's the student council LGBTQIA meeting. Let's see, everybody up to date? Did we discuss? Everybody know what this stands for now? Yeah. The extra letters now are intersex and asexual. There you go. If this were the 18th century, you'd be beheaded for talking back to the student council president, apparently, is what you'd refer to. Um, 
And uh, what's the guy's name from uh, Apocalypse Now? Kurtz? Kurtz, yeah. He's, we're in the middle of a quest. He's getting lippy. Kurtz is the worst. <laughs> he really was the worst. I was like, I can't wait for this guy to be gone. <laughs> so. He's no lug nut. What, who, who's Roger Corman? What movies did he have? Uh, like Faster Pussycat Kill Kill uh, and all the exploitation movies of the 70s. Okay. Of fast Cars and Switchblade Sisters. Yeah, he was <laughs> brought... Is this a high school movie? Or a high school or a Roger Corman movie? I wrote it's, that quote down. That was yeah. a great quote. Yeah. That's, again, a moment of realization. Like, Jug, Jug <laughs> sees behind the veil. Like, what is happening? Is this a high school or a Roger Corman movie? So they got to go to Weatherby's office. Uh, got... Uh, the originators of the uh, PG-13 Grope Sesh are in there with Mr. Weatherby, Tony and Jug, and somebody robbed the chemistry lab last night. And they're probably going to use it to cook drugs. Um, well, serpents don't cook or steal anymore. They don't do, neither do the well, pretty How dare you besmirch the name of our good street gang? <laughs> exactly. So, what I want to know is... Who would Carly hmm. be a member of? The uh, serpents or the poisons? Yeah, I don't know. Um, She's got a serpent jacket. She does indeed. Uh, I'm not... I don't know this answer right at the moment. Okay. Well, I, you need to ask her. This is yeah. the kind of stuff we need to know. That Le Bon Nuit. She, well, I, I wrote that down too, that Carly's school was right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the amount of gang activity we're now seeing in Riverdale High, that could have happened at her school. Yeah, we're, if they yeah. hadn't banned these jackets, just yeah. ahead of the grade there, so, whew, dodged a bullet. <laughs> um, Le bon, we, uh we got Gladys is in there drinking up the liquor, and uh, Reggie wants to know if Ronnie needs him to bounce somebody. Veronica has no control of any situation mm-hmm. she walks into. She never has a handle on it. She's got a. Cohen Brothers quote here. I did, didn't know if you caught. Did you see the? What was the Cohen Brothers movie most recently? Before Buster Scruggs. Yes. I can't remember the name of it. Is the reason I'm asking, but I saw oh. it. Was uh, had George Clooney and oh, uh, the where he was a Roman. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, gosh. Anyway, yeah. she yeah, said, uh, "Hail Caesar." Hail yeah, Caesar. she says, "Would that it were so simple, Archie." Would that it were? Would that it were? Uh, I mean, Reggie says, "Would that it were so simple." I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's great, <laughs> great quote." Um, me also, uh, Mister Lodge is in there. The Ram, he's doing the same thing. He's wanting to entertain clients, and you know, he's got a huge belt. It's comped. It's comped. But both these people want Veronica to pay them. But they are actively hurting her business and her chance to make money to pay them. I back. think this is how that works. They want to drag that bill out as long ah, as possible. So that's it, it, uh, on purpose. So they need to make some more money and need new cash cow. Reggie says so. She says, "Well, our best night was when Elio was in here and we had casino. So might as well. We're already running a speakeasy." Um. Back over at the gym, and Archie's sweeping up, burning his keep. And comes Just Josie. You know, they were going to go get something to eat. It pops. Oh, they hear something. So the light are clicking. They go over to the closet. So he busts open the closet <laughs> several times in this episode. Um, there's a kid in there, Ricky. Oh, Ricky. Little Ricky. Ugh. He's got a lighter. And, of course, Arch, Archie immediately identifies with him. Oh, yeah. He's like, I've got to basically adopt this kid right now. So they take him to Pops. Want to know how long he's been holding up in that cubby. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was, he'd been staying at the Santa Lucia shelter. Had we ever heard of that before? I don't believe so. And he's scarred. He's got the same brand that Archie has. It's quite a coincidence. It's cut into him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, I got one just like that. Archie's like totally... He's you know, enamored. Yeah. You're just like me. <laughs> it's like the two Spider-Mans pointing at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, they go 
takes him to the garage. <laughs> Is it still soundproof? <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you. As soon as we he got didn't in the even garage, warn him. he didn't even warn him that it wasn't soundproof. Yeah, he's like the heater's on. There's soda, food. I feel like I've been waiting for the return to the garage for a good while now. He's like, I just want you to know, the garage is kind of my space. <laughs> yeah, before we had the bunker, it was the garage. That's yeah. where all the action went down. Yeah, he's like, after school tomorrow. He's like, well, first I'll take you to Pops and put you in a booth. <laughs> <laughs> what was that plan? He's like, then I'm going to take you to the gym and teach you some moves, some combos. Don't telegraph your moves, by the way. That's That'd right. be a big mistake. Oh, over at Thistle House. What's going on with you, TG? Has my beauty rendered you silent? Cheryl's beauty has rendered Tony silent. Or are you still in a mood about your sit down with Weatherby? Well, if I'm being honest. Starting to argue a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There's some uh, bickering. Yeah. Some bickering going on. So they've been said, planting seeds for a while. None of them seem too insurmountable, but they're they're the show's trying to break these people up, but do it. Like, I don't think they want the wrath of the fans to right. happen. They're definitely afraid of the fans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've, they've got hashtags and things that we can't just let go of. You have to protect that stuff. Right. But, you know, I don't want to lose blow pass. I had that classroom reserved as student body president. Babe, you wear many hats. Stunningly. But when you put on that purple jacket, you represent our gang. And now Weatherby's out for our blood? I can handle Weatherby. Cheryl, I don't want to have to suspend anyone for loose cannon behavior. Least of all my own girlfriend. Agreed. That would make hosting Pretty Poison's meetings at my house incredibly awkward. Don't you think? Unless you have another headquarters in mind. With a pool. The girls can't wait for summer. So she just let her know, you know when you put that jacket on? You kind of represent us, so don't go getting mouthy. Yeah, in the long run, I'm, I'm hoping they do something to just show that, hey, this is a real relationship. People, real relationships, people have fights. People don't always get along. It's not perfect. And really kind of, because they've done a good job with this, as campy and silly as, as the show gets. But in this way, I think for there is a group of fans out there that really identify with what's happening there. And Cheryl never is not Cheryl. Like, she never... Yeah fully lets her guard down and is honest and vulnerable but as close as she ever is it's with Tony yeah so she's at least trying to kind of meet her halfway and be you know not just drama queen cherry bombshell <laughs> so over at the uh, awesome student lounge B and V are sitting down she's telling her she's trying to sabotage the selling of the house but She's sure to find some ghoul that will live in the death house. <laughs> so that was pretty good. Um, they got the farm got got Kev. It's and they got t shirts too. We got farmy tees. Yeah, we were waiting on those. Yeah, I gotta see what's on the wall here and there. There's a. I don't know. You don't know from where it hits you, but you want to be loved? I don't know. Physics special class? I don't know. I'm just afraid they're going to hide something in the background. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> um. Well, you're always welcome at the Pembroke B. If you got nowhere to live. She's like, you know, Archie's like, hey, I've already got a homeless kid sleeping in my garage. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just kind of drops that nonchalantly. Yeah, like that's a normal thing to tell right. people. His name's Ricky. You're in LA from home. <laughs> I'm gonna keep him, <laughs> <laughs> and I will kiss him and hug him. <laughs> and first thing, Betty said, "Oh my God, is he playing G and G? What? Why are you asking?" Him? He's like, "Well, actually, I left him at Pops for the day." Yeah. Because that's a responsible. She's thing. like, "Maybe you should call Mrs. Weiss." She can help get him a good home. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I promised him I would never do that, but... Okay. Yeah, again, he's Archie like, would never think to do that. Right. Like, he's no, that would make too much sense. He's like, no, let's go do that. Then Kev's at his locker. He's got it open. He's got, let's see, in there. Got a, got a patch on there for RROTC. Uh, and the Bulldogs practice schedule. And wait, yep. 
what do you want to talk to me about, Betty? He was very sassy. God, you're so transparent. <clears throat> She's like, I'm just trying to help you. No, you're a d- detractor. <laughs> Which I think we've tied this into uh, Scientology before. Right. I know there's mm-hmm. a word Scientologists use to kind of you distance yourself from anyone who is holding you back for your potential. Right. I don't know what the word is. But... Uh, it's, well, it's, they don't, you're not, if it doesn't bring you joy, I think you're supposed to get rid of them. That's yeah. <laughs> you thank it for being in your life. Yeah. You hold it. They get rid of them, yeah. yeah. Same thing. Um, Swords and Serpents having a meeting. They finally got the room. And they want, want to know if uh, Fangs or Sweet Pea know anything about somebody breaking into chemistry lab. Well, old Kurtz steps up. Think about looting the alchemist lair. It was a rewarding quest. He's like, and I've got immunity, you promised. Yeah, I thought I really hated Chick until this guy came around. <laughs> right, he's pretty bad. But, like, the whole episode, he obviously doesn't want to be there. Yeah. No one in the gang wants, wants him, him there. there. So I didn't understand the drama of, like, he has to be one of us. I, I yeah. What the purpose of him sticking around was. I don't know, but they start getting in each other's faces and you gotta look up get this sound clip in there uh, later of a uh, <laughs> Jughead says alright yeah alright back down both of you right now <laughs> he is really a <laughs> never bad blood okay. existed between the serpents and the gargoyles mad. hey you gotta it's be fine. over <laughs> we're all serpents now Kurt plays by a different set of rules he's like your mom came to me so you better figure out how to get along with me. Um, or we'll throw you out of our gang, Kurt says. Boom. So the Bonnois got their casino stuff all set up and they know how to hide it if the cops come. So Oh yeah, they've got fake walls and panels and and, yeah. and switches and levers. Yep. So and they've also got pops. It might be later in the show, but they have Pops work in there, too, in the tuxedo. Oh, I didn't even see that. I didn't either. I was watching it, and like something else was going on in the foreground. I'm like, wait a minute. I just saw him before they cut to a different shot. I rewound it, and there's Pops standing behind the bar in a tuxedo. Like He has to work all day in the diner, and you have to bring him down to the the speakeasy at night. He's he's working for Veronica. Come on. So at least this makes sense that... uh, Jughead has a meeting with the sheriff now that it's his dad. He's uh, at the sheriff's office. He's telling his dad it was the gargoyles, but mom got him in the gang. You know, it's her fault. Now, and we don't have any sense of purpose. The serpents have lost their way. And he's like, boy, <laughs> you got to make the serpents what you want them to be. Put that jacket on with pride. Give them something they can sink their teeth into. Archie's coming to pick up it's a new son at Pops and... Archie Jr.? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Junior. Junior Archie is what we refer to him. Junior Archie. Um, he's like, Pops like, you looking for your friend, Archie? He left. There's I people. called child services. On. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some thugs came and chased him out of here, started banging on the glass. And they're seeing somebody run so fast. But he was drawn on a placemat. And he drew this ridiculously, like, it's like, doesn't that look like a, is this like a Batman thing? This is like the ha 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 ha. It's very macabre, yes. And all the bats, are just it's instead of the bats and stuff, it's the gargoyle symbols. Um, Betty goes and to the chemistry lab and peeks under the farmy meeting in progress sign and sees Kevin there holding his hand over a Bunsen burner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Not all the farmies are in there doing it. Poor Kevin. Uh, they meet with Miss Weiss, Pops, and she's like, yeah, we got to get the... Some, the guy, Sketch Artist, draws an incredibly <laughs> detailed picture of Ricky. Yeah. Like, geez, that was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> this looks exactly like him. Um, so... 
Mr. Lodge wants to bring a guy from a playing card company to Le Bon Nui because he wants him to get... Now that we figured out to put prisoners in the prison, <laughs> we want to have them do some job for pennies on you know, per hour and make a product, some playing cards, so we can make some money. The prison industrial complex, That's man. Right. And... Meanwhile, Gladys is mentioning, throw, just throwing out there, that she used to sing The White Worm. <laughs> she was kind of the Joan Jett of Riverdale. She's got an itch to scratch. So how about, you know, Veronica's making deals to get 5% off of her debt, which I thought was a pretty low number to start with. <laughs> yeah, why? Yeah. What's the smallest amount I could have? <laughs> so Betty tells Just Josie about... Kev, since she's kind of in his family now or whatever, you know. It's like, well, he's been sneaking out. I thought he was going to Fox Forest. But maybe not. So anyway, back in the bunker. Jughead pulls out the extremely detailed drawing of Ricky and shows it to everyone. Says, we're going to go looking for this dumb kid. And Archie and Kurt's getting each other's faces. Like everybody's gonna we'll go. Look. So back at Lawana we um we got Gladys singing Ladies and Gentlemen Misunderstood we have a very Kill special Bill. treat for you tonight. Making her debut Recognize at the Bon Nui. Miss Gladys Jones. Um She's terrible. And the guys making the playing card guy is making fun of her. And I know. But he's also she's, does she pull switchblade on him or she's threatened to see my other side. So uh you got good vibes, yeah? Why don't you get by some tips? Oh I'll give her a tip. Alright. Oh uh, yeah? And I got a sharp tip for you boys too. Here. <laughs> okay, now you can throw them out. On it. <clears throat> All right. Gotta ask you to leave, bro. Are you kidding me? Cheekbones here is bouncing me. Get your hands off. Okay. <laughs> they get thrown out. They, they throw out the card guy. Reggie. Throws them out. Cheekbones, they call it. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good diss. <laughs> um. And then we got Kev walking across coals out in the woods. Yeah, Betty tries to stop him. Yeah, that's again, it's the same thing as saving her mom from getting drowned. It's like, oh, whatever. It's the greatest <laughs> thing. I I wanted to drown. I want to walk across fire. It's I better run through. Do you know how many thorns me? are in Fox Forest? This is nothing. <laughs> um... Jughead found Gargoyle Ground Zero. It's back there. Curses, you know, in Cambodia or whatever. <laughs> They've seen a piece of cardboard or whatever in there. It says all the sacrifices. It's got all the names yeah, on Yeah, it's got there. on there. Dilton and Ben, Button, Tallboy, Marked Out, a bunch of sisters, and the warden. Only two names left. Archie Andrews and Ricky D. <laughs> Guess who's hiding in the cubby? You never guess. <laughs> Junior. It was like it's literally the same thing. Archie busts into another <laughs> closet, and there's that dang kid again. <laughs> He's like, I thought I already adopted you. It's just a really bad game of hide and seek. He's like, I thought him. this is the last place you'd come looking for me. In the closet. I'm marked for death. That's what this symbol means. I read the thing. Uh, Betty's working on her article because she's going to. She wants to know if uh, Kev and. Uh, Ever never want to go on record for doing their crazy stuff. Dangerous call to deluded teenagers performing cult-like self-harming activities. Hey, 
It was fun, cathartic. Kev's never felt so energized. And if she tells anybody, we're going to be able to talk about how the shady man uh, was killed at her house. Because Alice told him everything and how she buried the body. It was kind of a mic drop moment. Yeah. It was like, oh, they got the upper hand. Because yeah. Betty's usually on top of all this stuff, mm-hmm. but not at that point. And how the sheriff, uh, the new sheriff back then, dissolved the body. Lie. Uh, so anyway, Kev's training the kid. He's like, you know, when I was fighting in juvie. <laughs> oh. So dumb. This was how I avoided being sacrificed. I fought people every day. <laughs> I was Mad Dog's son. Now you're my son. <laughs> He's like, I turned down to G and G and the Fizzle Rocks. And that's when they branded me. That's what that's what Ricky's saying. <laughs> it's like a horrible scared straight episode. Yeah. Of Archie. Get this kid's life together. Prison Archie. <laughs> Prisoner. Like Dementors. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, Classic Gambit hunted. If somebody out there could send us a picture of of Archie with a purple do rag on his head, please do. Oh, I probably have one. Um, Classic Gambit hunters become the hunted. There's some rogue goyles. <laughs> Which I thought was not the best choice of words. Um, so you two, Heckle and Jekyll, that's a couple of goyles that are in the group now. Um, everybody's got, There's a lot of names in the next couple of episodes. <laughs> Never have Tire Iron or Lug Nut, but there's some good ones. So they want to know who the outliers are. Um, Kurtz is trying to kill Fang, so Tony says, get out here. Sure enough, he's hanging upside down from the second floor. You'll fly too, he says. Hey, that was the next step at Carly's High School. She they yep. just avoided it. Yep. You're... Thank God they only have one floor. <laughs> <laughs> so they drop him on top of Jughead. Um, Cheekbones makes watery drinks, so Glass is getting her own. Yeah, she's worn her own. Um, and Reggie's starting to get a little, a little lippy too, but something's, oh, oh, back at our Archie's room, Junior Archie has went in there and put on his letter jacket. Well, keep it, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're my new son. You got my jacket. Ugh. <laughs> uh. like so then father and son Jones are talking about the, they're gonna have to take drastic action because things are getting violent they dropped dr- dropped fangs that wasn't good um they were gonna look for that lost boy and they well and and they gave him an idea so they've got some idea um Alice is telling Betty you gotta pack up I sold the house. Some anonymous buyer. Some ghoul. Uh, Kurtz boasted that the serpents need him more than he needs us. Well, guess what? The serpents are rudderless. And we're better when we are task-focused. So we just need a task. That's why with the help of Serpent Emeritus, <laughs> Sheriff yeah. F.P., we're going to become partners with the Riverdale Sheriff's Department, as you do. Makes sense to me. <laughs> He's like, you'll work with me, help with, with investigations, <laughs> and receive school credit to help apply for college, which Sweet Pea thinks is pretty cool. He's got a big grin. He's like, but it's got to be unanimous. If you don't like it, there's the damn door, and Kurtz has to walk out. Because it was everybody else liked the idea. Sweet. Do we get to carry guns? That's what they want to know. They can't. Nope. No guns. So playing video games, father and son, Archie and Junior Archie. I was trying to figure out what they were playing. I couldn't tell. It was four to one. That's all we know. Score was four to one. Santa Lucia Shelter says the guy kid's name 
is really Ricardo de Santos. That's right. <gasps> Joaquin. Joaquin's younger brother. Junior Joaquin. He's at my house. Look, Miss Wise, I, I gotta go. Archie, please be careful. I'll call you right back. His file shows he has a history of violent behavior. Uh oh. All He's right. gone. Ricky. Ricky. Where is he? Oh, he no. Where does Archie check? The closet. closet. He's no dummy. You can't. <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> yeah. Ricky, come on. It's not funny. You in there? So he checks the third closet in the episode. He's not in there. Turns around. There he is with the knife. He says, I wrote my name on that thing. I gave this scar to myself. I want to win this game and kill the Red Paladin. So... What are you doing? It's the only way the gargoyles will let me in and let me play the game with them. Gargoyles? Ricky, listen to me. You don't want to do this. I have to finish what he started. You mean Joaquin. That's your brother, right? I knew Joaquin. Okay, he was a good guy, but he listened to the wrong people and he wound up dead because of it. If I don't do this, the gargoyles, they won't protect me. Protect you? They marked you for sacrifice the same way they did Joaquin. What, you mean this? <laughs> I gave it to myself. And at the lair, I added my name onto yours. He takes the you, knife and he me? slashes Archie. Oh. Is that how my brother stabbed you? Archie, Dad, don't come in. He mauls him just like a bear. <laughs> yep, yep. I and really I, first thing, so we had to mark it down. New scar. Yep. Yes. We got a new scar. Okay, we got this new shiv scar. Knife. Slash scar. That's I'm, just that's not the last one either. I really wanted it to be shot like the bear attack was, where you just see Archie yeah. go what, and then it cuts the commercial. commercial. So what do we got so far? We got tattoo. We got the bear scar. The brand. The brand, the brand and now a knife scar. Okay, let's <laughs> <What's> see. A- <laughs> this is great. Didn't They're gonna Joaquin, have to do so many. Didn't Joaquin stab him? Oh also? yeah, yeah. That's the second time. <laughs> Oh, Joaquin okay. stabbed him too New with the shave. Okay, Joaquin stab. Okay. So yeah, we, when he first got to prison. Yeah, five yeah. things. Five scars. When he was just running. Remember, he was just running for like weeks <laughs> through the woods. <laughs> so, so, a little sad moment. Fred comes in, patches him up. But again, uh, Archie's not known for his brains. What? But he's known, he's known for his fighting ability. Mm-hmm. And a ten-year-old get, yeah. gets in there. Stabs yeah. Well, it's, him. it's because he didn't call it out. Oh, okay, he didn't telegraph. Right, right. left, right. <laughs> Spider. Back at Thornhill, there's still some. Vector. Archie didn't know what was coming. He's like, "You're not telegraphing. You're stabbing at all." <laughs> I told you, Spider. <laughs> he should have kissed him. Like, didn't Joaquin kiss him? Yeah, I think so. He should have been like, "Daddy, <laughs> give him uh, a big kiss." First night of the new job. You coming tonight, babe? Mm, nah. I think I'll pass. Feeling a little under the weather tonight. Well, see you later. I'll be asleep. Cheryl's okay. reading The Price of Salt. <laughs> What's that? Uh, bug? <laughs> Alexa, what is The Price of Salt? The top search result for salt is the Spice Labs Himalayan Crystal Salt, <laughs> Dark Peak. Course, 2.2 pounds. It doesn't work it's $7 every time. $7.75 <laughs> on Amazon. Oh, she wants to sell Remember, on Amazon? You can, yeah. you can get it on Amazon? <laughs> really? Yeah. And seller information. That's why Alexa, you can order it. salt. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I was like, he's really going to try to spend my money. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what this book is. Anyway. It's I I remember I think I looked it up. It was it's similar to the one Veronica was reading, kind of a pulpy novel dealing with uh, from back in the day. Yeah, ladies, oh, it's definitely got that pulp cover. Ladies' relationships, sapphic, some mad sapphic capers. 
Anyway, so now the poisons are working for Veronica, and they won't let. And it was also didn't uh, who said that in a previous episode? Like you know, the price of salt. And, uh, uh, Cheryl's mom mm. used that as a reference. So yeah, pretty poisons won't let Gladys or the Ram in. That a great invitation. Um. Now Betty's got a pink candle. She's lit. She went. She's holding her hand over it because Dark Betty just for a second gets out. And then we got a uh, Alice is like, I'm leaving to go get more bubble wrap. So Betty goes downstairs with her candle and they're like, yep, oh, she's going to do something, but we didn't know what yet. Back at the, at Kurtz's place, they start cleaning up fresh coat of paint, a couple of atomic bombs. This place will be nice. It's going to be the new serpent headquarters. Um, Archie's like I let my guard down for a second <laughs> and people come out of the woodwork trying to kill me something's going on everybody's always trying to stab him right Alice comes home and Betty has set the house on fire hanging out with Cheryl and that was the episode yeah so up in flames it was quite an inferno and you know something that serious gonna have lasting repercussions I'm oh sure. it should yeah. yeah oh i can wait till the next week the price of salt is a 1952 <laughs> romance novel by patricia highsmith <laughs> yeah, it's about lesbian relationships oh, it's kind cool. of a early uh risque sort of novel oh you couldn't order that yeah well sorry <laughs> <laughs> all right so what do you think we got Need, a new scar uh, Fred showed up in that episode at least once. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. patched Archie up. Yeah, his scene that he hasn't had much screen time, but now it's, it's so Everything's magnified. Everything's momentous. Yeah, yeah, this next next week's episode we talk about. There's a pretty, pretty Just touching that, scene. That's that yeah, little bit of fatherly is. advice kind of you know <laughs> left the impression with us, much like a knife wound. Uh, thank you for listening. We've yeah. got another episode coming up real soon. And we'll be back to talk about episode 50. We are hitting a milestone. Yeah, pretty next big week. deal. Yep. All right, my name is Jordan Lowe. I'm Cliff Barnes. I'm Seth. Bye forever. Can't find the right one. There it is. Kapow! The Pop Culture Podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Sounds, music, and clips played during the podcast are property of copyright holders. All original content is property of www.udownwithkpp.com. You bought you a salt lamp? I've got all these choices of salt to buy now. <laughs> it's gonna. It's great. You got salt lamps. I'm going to expect that here next time I come over. It's like, here's all these choices. Prison sounds horrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Andy. Thanks. Prison Mike, what's the very, very worst thing about prison? Don't encourage him, Dwight. The worst thing about prison was the, was the Dementors. They were flying all over the place, and they were scary, and then they'd come down, and they sucked the soul out of your body, and it hurt. Dement- Dementors like in Harry Potter? No, not Harry Potter.